Today we're going to restore this old Acer laptop, which has a fifth generation Core i5 in it. Um, the tools are pretty simple and the process is pretty straightforward. For this project, you're going to need some Q-tips. You're also going to need some isopropyl alcohol. You're going to want some thermal paste as well as probably a spudger of some kind. And then just any small Phillips head screwdriver will do. I'm gonna be using this kit and then something to clean the surfaces with. These are some lens wipes. I'll also use some isopropyl alcohol and some paper towels later on in the process. So let's get started. To start off, I'm gonna be using this Phillips Zero head screwdriver. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to pop off all of the screws in the back of the laptop. I have some along all of the edges and then a couple along the middle. So let's pop those off now. And while you're doing this, you're just gonna to wanna to, you know, group the screws together. This is the process that you'll do throughout the refurbishment of the laptop is you're just gonna wanna make sure that all of the same size screws are together and keep track of which ones go where. That'll be really useful. All right, so you're gonna wanna use the spudger and just kind of pop this thing off and back. I opened it up and realized that there are some ribbon cables that were holding the keyboard to the back plate. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just remove those ribbon cables now. Just popped them off with the spudger. And once you do that, you can remove the keyboard assembly just like that. All right, so this is what the inside looks like. Over here on the right, we have our hard drive. Um, we're gonna replace that with an SSD later on. It'll boost the performance quite a bit. We also have the RAM right here. It's just a four gig stick, nothing special. It looks like it's running in single channels, so there's not a lot of upgrading we could do. We could throw a, an eight gig stick in here. Um, we'd lose much performance if, or we wouldn't have much of a performance gain if we put like a 16 gig in, um, but I don't have any eight gig sticks, so I'll probably just leave that the way it is. We have our CD drive over here on the left. And then this looks like the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card. And this, I'm not 100% sure what this is. It seems to be some sort of flash storage of some kind running in some M.2 slot. Looks like it's only 20 gigs. And when I look in the BIOS, it doesn't look like it has any sort of booting capabilities. So there's nothing really major you know, on there. But if you know what it is, let me know in the comments below. All right, so here we have the cooling system. So we have this heat pipe that runs over to the fan that pulls heat from the CPU and uh, exhausts it out the back. So we're gonna want to remove that. So I'm gonna start by taking this screw off here because which holds the hinge for the screen as well as the fan in place and then just remove these other screws and see where we're at. So it looks like there's some other things still holding it down. There's really not, much of a science to this. A lot of older laptops don't have um, disassembly instructions online, so you just kind of have to wiggle your way through it, you know, kind of, you know, test things here as you're taking things out. Just keep track of what you take out and make sure you can put it back together. Um, I probably didn't need to remove that cord or that, that ribbon cable. Um, I definitely know I didn't need to remove the hard drive, but I was going to replace the hard drive anyway. So I figured I would just do that now anyway, um, since it was kind of getting in my way of taking the cooling system off. So I'm gonna pop these screws out here and that removes the hard drive just like that. So we'll replace that with an SSD later. All right, so I just continue to kind of, you know, move the fan around here and see if I can pull it out. And I realize that there's a screw right here um, underneath this this fan. So I took that screw out and it made pulling the fan assembly out really easy. So I was able to get that cable out. It was a little bit stubborn, but I was able to get it out. And now I have the cooling solution, which is off. There's some old thermal paste that we'll remove later. And then what you're gonna wanna do as you're taking this thing apart anyway, is you're gonna wanna just brush everything out um, pretty consistently just to make sure everything's clean. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some isopropyl alcohol as well as um, a Q-tip and just clean off the old thermal paste from this uh, this CPU here. Um, the older thermal paste gets, the less effective it is at transferring heat, and so you're gonna wanna do that and then do the same to the cooler as well. Just remove any of the old thermal paste and we'll replace that later with some new thermal paste. You can get a tube of thermal paste for like seven bucks. It's not expensive and it can make a pretty big performance jump as far as uh, cooling 
performance goes. And then you're gonna wanna just dust out the fan here. I just use a paintbrush. You can see that there's some, some dust that ends up on my table there. I'll just wipe that off later. But you just brush the heat fins out and the fan, and now you've got a clean cooling assembly there. So we're gonna put that back in here soon, but let's check out the RAM first. So I'm just gonna pop this RAM out here, see what it is and brush that out. And yeah, it looks like it's four gigabytes of DDR3, I think is what we're looking at here, since you know we're looking at fifth generation i5 processor. I don't have anything better to replace that, so I'm just gonna slot that back in. All right, now let's replace the hard drive with a five, uh, 250 gigabyte SATA SSD that I have from Western Digital. Just had this one lying around. Looks like we have a couple of screws here holding this bracket that keeps everything in place inside the laptop. So I'm just gonna remove these screws really quickly here and take this bracket off of the mechanical hard drive, just like that. And then I just line that bracket back up with the SATA SSD and I put the screws back in. All right, so there we have it. We have the bracket back on the SATA SSD now, and we'll just slot that back in where the mechanical hard drive was. All right, let's go ahead and put this assembly back on the CPU. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take some thermal paste, I have mine from Noctua, and you're just gonna apply a little dab. You don't need very much. I actually probably put a little bit too much on here, um, but a little bit extra isn't gonna be harmful. Um, it just won't do anything if you put a little bit extra on. So I'm gonna tighten a couple scr screws down and then slot this thing in place. I realized that there were some cables in the way here in a little bit and so um, had to move some of those cables around. Just plug everything back in that I unplugged and tighten some screws down there. All right, and then we just plug this SATA SSD back in, route these cables in. Now you'll notice here in just a little bit that I actually missed screwing one of the screws into the fan assembly, so that was kind of stupid. So I had to unplug the cables here again right after plugging them in so I could put this screw in. Now, I didn't keep as good track of the screws as I should have, and so that's actually the wrong size screw that I just bolted in there, and I actually heard a pop, and I broke some of the plastic on the back plate here. Yep, there's a little bit of a pop there. You can't hear it on the video, but kind of broke some of the plastic on the bottom of the P of the laptop there. So, so just plug those things back in, put that screw down, and I'm gonna plug this daughter board back in. Just like this. And then I'm gonna reattach the ribbon cable here. Goes over the SSD. Just give everything a final brush to make sure that there's no dust here. And then as I'm about to put the keyboard back on, I realize that there's some dust on there. So I'm gonna give this back, key, the back of the keyboard here um, a good dusting as well. You can also use compressed air, that's really popular. I just happened to run out of compressed air, so I couldn't do that. But you just attach it back at the hinge and I had some real trouble putting these ribbon cables back in. I struggled here for quite a bit of time. And in fact, I just had to eventually put the ribbon cables back on off screen because it, was, it took me like six minutes trying to put these things back in. And it was like one o'clock in the morning and I was like, I don't wanna do this anymore. So I just went ahead and put those back in off screen. But once you get the ribbon cables back in, I just go ahead and clip everything back in place. All right, and then we're gonna clean the surfaces off. I used the paintbrush and then some of the lens cleaning wipes, but I realized that the lens cleaning wipes weren't doing very much, so I used isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel. I accidentally popped a key cap off, but that's no problem. You can literally just push that back in and everything is fine. And then I used some isopropyl alcohol and um, some Q-tips and cleaned between every key cap because um, I didn't think I was gonna need to do this, but it turns out that there's actually quite a bit of dirt and grime that gets under there. I guess when someone uses the keys for quite a bit of time and maybe doesn't clean the keyboard very often, then you end up with quite a bit of dirt. 
And so I just used the Q-tip, went between every key, and things started to look significantly better. As far as the screen went, I tried using a lens cleaner for a little bit, and that just wasn't really doing anything. So then I used some isopropyl alcohol and um, a paper towel, and that got a good amount of the dirt and grime off. And then here I finish up with a lens cleaning wipe, and that took off the final things, and so, or the final dirt and smudges and things like that and started to look significantly better. Here I'm gonna put on all of the screws on the bottom case, all those things that I kept track of. You can see that there's um, a little bit of uh, some cracked plastic on the bottom there. I'll show a little bit in more detail here, but that was from putting the wrong screw in on the inside. That's why you wanna keep track of your screws. Um, and then as I was putting the screws back in, I realized that I was missing a couple screws. There you can see the blemish a little bit. All right, so now let's clean the top case. Just gonna head and jump, dump some alcohol on there and uh, start spudging the stickers off. These honestly were kind of a pain, but you just gotta be patient with them. Um, just keep with it. And so I ended up pouring quite a bit of alcohol on there to just soak through the different stickers and, uh, and get everything off. Um, and I realized that that was being effective, so I poured some more on the other sticker to let that set as I was trying to peel this first sticker off. I was able to get most of the residue off and then just wipe it down with a paper towel there. That worked pretty well. And now I can just come through and scrape off this sticker. I thought they were gonna come off, but they uh, they didn't. So I just kinda had to scrape the residue off, which was fine. I got it eventually to where it needed to go. And then just give everything a final wipe down and um, you're pretty much done. I tried peeling the sticker, the Acer logo off there, didn't work. But there you have it, um, a refurbished laptop. You've replaced the thermal paste, you cleaned everything up. If I had a eight gig stick of RAM, I would have thrown that in there, but I don't. So this is the best performance we're gonna get for what I have. So you have it, how to refurbish an old laptop and make it just as good as new.